healing and regeneration peptides. When most people first hear about peptides, the names that usually come up are BPC-157 and TB-500. These two are often referred to as the healing peptides, and that's because of the unique way they interact with tissue repair and inflammation inside the body. BPC-157, which stands for body protection compound, is a peptide originally discovered in gastric juices in the stomach. It has been heavily studied in animal models, and while human trials are limited, the results so far are promising. Research suggests BPC-157 may help accelerate the healing of muscles, tendons, ligaments, nerves, and even the lining of the gut. In fact, many people in the fitness community call it the Wolverine peptide because of how quickly it seems to speed up recovery after injuries. Athletes and bodybuilders often claim faster rehab times from sprains, tendonitis, joint inflammation, and even surgical procedures when using it. Then there's TB500, which is a synthetic fragment of a larger protein called thymosin beta-4. This peptide works differently from BPC157. Instead of directly reducing inflammation, it promotes cell migration and new blood vessel formation, which are both critical steps in repairing damaged tissue. It is especially popular among people dealing with muscle tears, joint problems, or soft tissue injuries that would normally take months to recover from. Some athletes combine BPC-157 with TB-500 to create what they call a healing stack that addresses inflammation and tissue regeneration at the same time, giving them a more complete recovery tool. The promise here is obvious. Faster healing means less downtime, more consistent training, and the ability to push physical limits without as much risk of long-lasting injury. But here's where the caution comes in. Neither of these peptides are FDA approved for human use, and most of the studies that exist are based on animal models, not large-scale human trials. This means that while the anecdotal evidence is compelling, the official medical backing isn't fully there yet. On top of that, sourcing these compounds can be risky, since many peptides are sold online as research chemicals, rather than pharmaceutical-grade products. Still, despite the lack of regulation, their popularity continues to grow, especially in the fitness, longevity, and biohacking communities where faster recovery is seen as the ultimate advantage. Anti-aging and longevity peptides. If healing peptides are about fixing what's broken, anti-aging and longevity peptides are about slowing the clock altogether. This group is one of the most talked about in wellness clinics and biohacking spaces, often promoted as tools to extend health span, boost vitality, and potentially keep the body youthful for longer. One of the most famous peptides in this category is epitalon. Discovered in Russia, epitalon has been linked in studies to telomere lengthening. Telomeres are the protective caps at the ends of your DNA strands, and they naturally shorten over time as cells replicate. Shortened telomeres are one of the markers of aging, so the theory is that protecting or lengthening them could slow down certain aspects of the aging process. Some researchers believe epitalon may influence melatonin production, improve sleep, and enhance overall lifespan in animal models, though human data is still limited. Then there's GHKCU, also known as the copper peptide. This naturally occurring peptide is found in plasma, saliva, and urine and it has gained fame in the skincare industry because of its remarkable effects on skin repair, collagen production, and even hair growth. Cosmetic brands add it to topical creams and serums, but it can also be injected for systemic benefits. Beyond beauty, GHKCU has shown promise in wound healing and reducing inflammation, making it a crossover peptide between cosmetic and regenerative medicine. Another key player is thymosine alpha-1, a peptide that supports immune function. Unlike many others on this list, thymosin alpha-1 has actually been used in clinical settings in certain countries to treat viral infections and as an adjunct therapy in cancer. It works by boosting T-cell function, which helps the immune system fight off pathogens more effectively. Alongside these, many longevity enthusiasts also point to NAD+, and its precursors like NRMN and NR which, while not peptides, are often grouped into this same anti-aging toolkit because of their critical role in cellular energy production and DNA repair. NAD plus levels decline with age, 
and restoring them is thought to support mitochondrial function, improve energy, and slow cellular aging, which is why it has become a cornerstone of many longevity protocols. In an age where people are increasingly focused on both resilience and vitality, these compounds have gained widespread attention. The appeal of anti-aging peptides and related molecules is obvious. They target the biggest fears people have about getting older, wrinkles, weaker immune systems, reduced vitality, and shorter lifespans. While the science in humans is still emerging, the idea of aging better, not just longer, is powerful, and it's why these therapies are often at the center of longevity discussions. Growth Hormone Releasing Peptides if the first two categories focus on recovery and longevity, the next category, growth hormone-related peptides, is where performance enhancement takes center stage. Growth hormone, often abbreviated as GH, is a naturally occurring hormone that declines as we age. It plays a vital role in muscle growth, fat metabolism, energy levels, and even tissue repair. Instead of injecting synthetic HGH, which is expensive, tightly controlled, and can shut down your body's natural production, people are turning to peptides that encourage the body to release more of its own GEH. The most popular of these is CJ, C1295, a peptide that mimics the body's natural growth hormone-releasing hormones. On its own, it can raise GH levels significantly, but it's most often paired with ipamorelin, another peptide that signals growth hormone release through a slightly different pathway. Together, CJC1295 and ipamorelin are known as one of the most synergistic peptide combinations, delivering noticeable boosts in growth hormone without the same risks associated with direct HGH injections. Another member of this category is sermorelin, which has been around for longer but doesn't last as long in the body compared to CJC1295. Still, it's sometimes used in anti-aging clinics and hormone replacement protocols because it provides a more natural stimulation of GH. The benefits people chase with these peptides are impressive. Increased lean muscle, fat loss, better sleep, faster recovery from workouts, and even improved skin quality since GH also supports collagen production. However, manipulating growth hormone is not without risk. Too much GH in the body can cause water retention, increase blood sugar levels, or in extreme cases, lead to unwanted tissue growth. It's a powerful tool, which is why these peptides are closely watched in competitive sports and regulated by anti-doping agencies. Still, for many in the bodybuilding and longevity communities, GH secretagogues are seen as one of the most effective peptide categories available, cognitive and mood peptides. While much of the conversation about peptides revolves around muscles, healing, and anti-aging, another fascinating category has emerged, peptides that target the brain. Known as nootropic peptides, these compounds are designed to enhance focus, mood, and cognitive performance. One of the most notable examples is Silank, developed in Russia as an anxiolytic peptide. Unlike traditional anti-anxiety medications, which often come with sedative effects or risk of dependency, Selank is reported to promote calmness and focus without the heavy downsides. It works by modulating neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine, while also showing immune-modulating effects, making it a unique hybrid of mental and physical support. Users describe it as providing a clear, steady sense of focus while taking the edge off stress and anxiety. Then there's CMAX, another peptide created in Russia, which leans more toward cognitive enhancement than mood regulation. CMAX has been studied for improving memory, learning ability, and neuroprotection. It has been used in stroke recovery protocols and is sometimes utilized by people who want to sharpen mental performance during demanding projects or high-pressure situations. Like Selank, CMAX has shown promise in influencing brain chemistry without the side effects associated with many pharmaceuticals. These cognitive peptides represent a growing interest in tools that not only improve the body, but also optimize the mind. The biohacking community has embraced them as alternatives or additions to traditional nootropics. And while the research is still limited, early results and anecdotal experiences suggest real potential. As with other peptides, sourcing and quality control are major concerns, but the idea of using short amino acid chains to directly influence mood and brain function has opened up a whole new dimension of peptide research. 
sleep and recovery, peptides. Another specialized group of peptides focuses on one of the most essential processes in human health, sleep. Good sleep is the cornerstone of recovery, hormonal balance, and long-term wellness, yet it's something many people struggle with. That's where peptides like DSIP, or Delta Sleep-Inducing Peptide, come in. Discovered decades ago, DSIP was studied for its ability to regulate sleep cycles and influence circadian rhythms. While the research has produced mixed results, anecdotal reports from users suggest it may help promote deeper, more restorative sleep. People claim they fall asleep faster, experience longer stretches of uninterrupted rest, and wake up feeling more refreshed. For athletes, this has big implications, since high-quality sleep is directly tied to better growth hormone release, improved recovery from intense training, and sharper focus. In addition to DSIP, peptides like CJC1295 and ipamorelin, though often categorized as growth hormone secretagogues, also play a significant role in recovery because they stimulate natural GH release during the night, indirectly enhancing deep sleep cycles and repair. Epitalon, typically discussed in the anti-aging category, has also been associated with melatonin regulation, which may improve circadian rhythm alignment and sleep quality. In the longevity and biohacking world, sleep peptides are framed as tools to optimize one of the most natural recovery processes the body has, rest itself. Better sleep means better hormone balance, immune function, and cognitive performance, making these compounds valuable parts of the conversation, even if the science hasn't fully validated their effects in large human trials. Beyond single peptides, some protocols combine DSIP with recovery-focused peptides, like BPC-157 or TB-500, to create stacks that target both muscular repair and sleep depth. While the evidence is still evolving, the demand for anything that improves sleep continues to grow and peptides are quickly becoming part of that toolkit for those who see rest not as passive downtime, but as an active biohack for performance and longevity. Cosmetic and lifestyle peptides. The last major category might not be essential to survival, but it's definitely popular. Cosmetic and lifestyle peptides. These are the compounds that people use to change how they look or feel in more superficial ways, but that doesn't make them any less sought after. One of the most infamous examples is melanotin-2, often nicknamed the Barbie drug. This peptide stimulates melanin production in the skin, which gives users a darker tan without needing as much sun exposure. That alone makes it appealing to people who want the bronze look without UV damage, but it doesn't stop there. Melanotin-2 is also known to significantly boost libido, a side effect that has fueled its reputation even further. However, it comes with risks. Side effects like nausea, flushing, and increased blood pressure are common, and there are concerns about long-term safety, including its potential to affect mole development or increase the risk of melanoma. Another example is KPV, a tripeptide that has anti-inflammatory and skin healing effects. It's being explored for conditions like eczema, psoriasis, and inflammatory bowel disease, but it's also making its way into skincare products for its soothing properties. These lifestyle peptides show just how broad the world of peptide therapy can be. They might not extend your lifespan or heal a torn tendon, but they offer enhancements that people are willing to experiment with. Whether it's a deeper tan, healthier skin, or improved sexual wellness, cosmetic peptides represent the fun and controversial side of the peptide spectrum. Together, they highlight how peptides are being used not just to restore health, but to push the boundaries of human appearance and lifestyle.